how you doing? <clears throat> Crikey, that was a bit of a rush back from the kitchen. Hope you're all doing sound. How are you? Welcome to the BBC Spews Live. It is the... Uh, I was get confused by the date in the United States. It's the 2nd of March, not the 3rd of February. Why can't we all just do the date the right way around, eh? That should be a universal thing. I can't help but feel like. Anyway... Uh, I'm not even listening to that. This is just somebody else who popped up on my feed due to me foolishly wading in on a um, post about <coughs> um, Trevor Coles. I think his name is, yeah, Trevor. I did meet him once on a live stream um, that Absolutely Average was doing and I literally talked to him for about 20 minutes and I think this was about 18 months ago and now there's a lot of people on Twitter who apparently think I'm his best mate. I was like, who? I barely know the fucking bloke who decided me and him are fucking bezzy up us. Um, so yeah, don't care about that. Uh, what else have we got going on on Twitter today? Loads of shit. And I've got a nice uh, an equity and inclusion story off the BBC. Obviously, because that's all the BBC knows how to do. So we'll cover that today. Who's in the chat though? Loads of already, so you're not all getting a name drop, but welcome. To, uh, I'll just pick halfway down. Uh, Professor Andy, oh, he's, he's always in. Oh, and a new member. How you doing? English Realist's been a member for four months. Happy birthday. Uh, four months? I, I mean, I suppose in this day and age where we give everyone a trophy for everything, you can you can have a present for being four months. But who cares? Let's do it in dog years. And Croydon Tramp is a new member. So welcome to you, Croydon Tramp. Um, I'm sure there's a large amount of Tramps watch me. I've been assured I'm very popular in the Salvation Army hostel. Um, <laughs> so welcome to Croydon Tramp and all the rest of my homeless followers. Uh, Billy Blagg's in. Uh, Jeff Wedden, Audio 178 BBM now then. Ragnar's in, all right. How are you doing? Thanks for moderating. Furq, Burry in Magical Puppet, Tony Keogh and anybody else. <coughs> right then. Um, should we do some news then? I, I, you know that I... Um, you know that I'm a bit bad for rambling before we get to the news. So this, today, I'm going to go straight straight into it. Because um, I've picked a story out. I've done a bit of prep. Is there a bit of lag on this screen? It seems a bit strange today. Normally there's not like... There's a bit of lag, doesn't there? Like when I'm moving, it's a little bit twitchy. It's like 20 frames per second or something. Kind of weird. Unless that's just on my end, at which point I will wind my neck in. Uh, maybe it's because Rishi Sunak's bastard playing. Let's get rid of him and put this fantastic BBC story on that somebody sent me. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Can skiing solve this diversity problem? Fuck off. Every time you try and read anything on the BBC now, they're trying to sell you shit. I've always found this annoying. Don't you think the BBC, considering that everybody pays the taxes... The BBC should be forced to sell the DVDs and shit like a cost. Because you're already paying for it. You're already paying for the BBC. If you want to go and buy like a Planet Earth DVD, it shouldn't be £39.99, should it? Um, so I think that's a lot of shite. But I hate the BBC, a funny old thing. That's why this is called the BBC Spews Live. And why I've been slagging off the BBC since, since before I could crawl. I hate the BBC. And I, well, you know what? That's a lie. I haven't always hated the BBC. I've hated them since they went woke, uh, which was... They were woke before woke was a thing, which is the first thing to admit. Uh, but the BBC's been ridiculous, far-left commie propaganda for about 20 years. Before then, it was actually quite respected around the world, and it was, you know, there was conservatives at the BBC. You just have to listen to Pete Richards talking about it. Uh, but in the last sort of 15, 20 years, it's just commie propaganda. Sounds a bit low. Crikey, are you all deaf in here? I always get winded at about the sound. Let me have a look. Uh, sound a deaf... All right, that was the camera. Maybe it was turned down, that was why. Audio. All right, there's the sound up a bit. <coughs> Hopefully that sounds better. Captain Pugwash. Okay, let's do some news. 
Can skiing solve its diversity problem? This is a question for the ages. Uh, personally, I don't think it's a problem when the people from certain parts of the world expect the people who live in that part of the world to partake in the, in the sports. Uh, I don't think it's a problem. Skiing seems to work fine. Um, I don't think you need to have Zulu warriors <laughs> partaking in the skiing. It's the same thing, right? Would it be a problem for King Atsunwebo if he looked around one day and there wasn't like a pasty French bloke in Chalapets carrying a pair of skis when he was doing a fucking buster in the Anglo Zulu Wars? You know, remember it was sat set away, or wasn't it? He was the like king of the Zulus. If he was doing, he was mustering the troops before um, before marching them to Rock's Drift. Do you think he went down there and he's like, "There is nobody wearing Chalapets. We need at least two pasty <laughs> motherfuckers in." Al Alpine ski wear before I'm going to go and try and twat the Brits. I just don't understand. Like, it seems relatively simple to answer this question. There isn't a problem. There just isn't one. Yeah, the, if you go anywhere in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East, this question never gets asked, ever. Doesn't matter what they're doing. Almost all of them are from the, of the same ethnicity. It's really fucking strange how this has took over the entire world, isn't it? Really strange. Like, I don't understand why it's the most important question every single fucking day. Are there enough Nigerians on the adverts? Who gives a flying fuck? It's only asked here because we're getting indoctrinated by these globalist psychopaths. It's only asked here. They don't, it's not even a question normal people care about. You know, you know I'm talking the truth here. It, Chinese television, they're not going to be like, and in today's news, well, they're not going to be saying that. They're going to be saying, hong 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 big dang. Uh, have you noticed the, <laughs> the way it goes up and down? It must be hard to learn Chinese with all that tonal shift in the language. But when they're saying that, you know, hong chung ding bang and it basically translates as something along the lines of, here is the Chinese football team. Let's see how well they do in the game. At no point does anybody go, where's all the fucking, where's all the white blokes? Hang on a sec. Nobody in that lineup looks like Idris Elba. What's the matter? It's like, it's the only fucking thing our commie overlords care about. I don't understand. This shouldn't even be a story. It's not a story because it's not a question. It hasn't got a diversity problem. That, <laughs> that, that reminds me of that. Did anybody see that when someone... Do you remember when all them cockle pickers or winkle pickers drowned in Wales? And uh, there was about like 30 of them. <laughs> Obviously, they were trafficked illegally. They all drowned. And the text message went around. I mean, no shit, I got the text message like the day after. And it was like, you know, oh, the police have released the names of the people that have drowned. And it was stuff like Sing King, Holy Fuck, all stuff like that. Like proper corny, like 1985 primary school joke shit. Going around on our black and white Nokia's. Yeah, Morgan Bay, I think. That, that's the one I'm on about. Yeah, way too low. That was one of them. Way, way, too, way so low. Thing is, it really did get played on the US television. Like, uh, <laughs> you would think that was like a meme or a, a a myth, an urban myth. But they actually did play it. Like, I remember years later being over here and seeing someone. It, I, I think someone showed me it on the phone in a pub, and I was like, "Fuck off!" But they actually did read it out. The read the names out. Pucker as they were on the text message. I wonder if I can find that on YouTube. How about if I type it in USA News. Chinese drowning. Let's see if it comes up. No, I can't find it. But it was actually on there. USA News. What about USA News Morton Bay? Nah. Yeah, I might be able to find it. If I find it one of these days, I'll pop it up on our next stream because that was fucking brilliant. Like, these, uh, this woman's actually fucking reading it out, you know, straight-faced like it's a real story. And she's like, 
Yes, tragic news from the UK. A large group of Chinese nationals drowned. Uh, the names were uh, Holy Fuck, Sing King, We Solo, and nobody in the fucking studio bats an eyelid. <laughs> Although, hey, maybe that's it. Maybe it was another one of... Maybe it was the plane crash. The point is, one of them horrific incidents involving lots of Chinese people was which went away around the UK as an amusing text message that you'd get off your dad uh, got read out on the telly out here. And uh, not one of them clocked when when the names were things like, holy fuck. <laughs> What's it? Oh, okay, it was the plane crash. Yeah, there you go. It was a plane crash. I was howling laughing at that. I was like, oh my God. How can you be a, a professional newsreader? And not like literally, I'm not a trained newsreader. I don't, I've never been any formal training. But if I was sat here and my missus put a bit of paper into me, into me aunt to read her live stream, and I was like, oh shit, a lot of people have died in a, a holy fuck. Like, you get to the first name in the list and go, fuck. But uh, yeah, apparently, couldn't manage it. Kitchen sinks. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I've got nothing against them, but I do prefer the kitchen taps. I, uh, I spent a lot of time in, in Asia, in the military. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in Japan. And I've got nothing against the kitchen sinks. Like, our government apparently wants to start a war with them so we don't have to pay our debts. But uh, I, I prefer the kitchen taps, obviously. <laughs> um, oh, here's new. How are you doing? All right. Welcome to it. And uh, yes, little Chi Bear, how are you doing as well? Let's read the news then. So obviously, we need to know. Enough of me rambling. We need to know if skiing can solve the problem. The problem being, black fellas don't fucking like the snow. I mean, funny that, isn't it? Weird. Weird. Can midgets solve their height problem? <laughs> Up at six. Can fat people solve their cholesterol issues? Well, it's up to them, isn't it? In fact, I've said that in fun, but the same answer does apply to this, isn't it? It's up to them. Like, these fucking lunatic commies who are controlling society constantly. The point was made by Jordan Peterson, right, when he said, the reason it's an evil ideology to have constant seeking out of equity in all things is because... If you value freedom, and that's what I've said to you a lot loads of times, like you call everybody um, far right nowadays when it's a very broad coalition. I was, I would have always considered myself liberal. I still consider myself liberal, but they call everybody far right now. And it's because the reason I still consider myself a liberal is because I don't believe the Americans know the dictionary definition of the fucking term. Um, and it's because I still value individual freedom. I'm a big believer in it. And I think the American, you get a lot of American conservatives that think the, uh, the liberal, they call themselves libertarians. But a lot of them libertarians you meet out in the States, again, they don't know what they're talking about. They haven't done the read. You're not a libertarian if you think perfect strangers should be bended to your fucking will. And your will is usually in lockstep with the, the Bible, right? I've made this point many times. Euthanasia should be legal. Now, again, we can disagree because I've got a normal channel followed by normal people. If you don't agree with euthanasia or abortion or the right to own a firearm, there's, there's a broad swathe of people there. The lefties don't like firearms. The old-fashioned conservatives don't like abortion and euthanasia. But my point is, it's up to you. It's up to you. I'll always believe that. I, I definitely think the left are degenerate perverts and now seem to be almost, almost promoting abortion rather than like just fucking a, use of common sense and put a welly on. Jesus. So they've gone too far because the commies are detestable. But ultimately, it's a hard decision that should rest with the individual. The, the government shouldn't be involved in your life any more than they need to be. And I don't care whether you're talking about firearm use, or euthanasia or abortion. Uh, euthanasia, I told you, I feel strongly about because my mum died of cancer. Uh, if you want to top yourself, that's up to you. The only person who should be involved in that conversation is you and your immediate family. Um, so I, I fully support the right of 
free people to make free decisions. And the point I'm getting at is it's like the horseshoe theory writ large. You can see how authoritarian the modern walk lunatics are because they're not left out of the walk. They're just authoritarian as fuck. Um, the, you can't solve diversity in skiing because the black people are choosing not to go skiing. Like in 2024, objectively, there are no limits. If fucking Idris Elba, I always say Idris Elba because he's the, the biggest English black man I can think of. Basically, if a black man who's living in the UK, who pays his taxes and has a job and pays his fucking way, wants to take his two-week holiday in Val d'Isere and go skiing, he can. You know he can. It's up to him. The problem is he doesn't want to. Because black lads aren't as into it as Northern Europeans. Just as I'm not as into the beach and sun. Like, they love the sun, don't they? I don't mind being cold. I like it. I've been skiing, snowboarding loads of times. I like being cold. It's very... I find it enjoyable. They don't. There was a boot neck. There was a black lad in my unit in the car when I was a 40 commando. I called uh, Sai. Marine Simon. It was funny how he pronounced it when everybody was introducing himself to like an officer. Hello there. I am Marine Simon. He's the only black man in the unit, right? He was a good lad. Mega fit. Good runner. One of the boys. But he hated the cold. In, in Norway, he wrapped his tits in. He was like, <sighs> fucking lips have gone blue. <laughs> never like, never. It's funny when, you, when, when you've got big lips and they go blue. Uh, he was like, fuck this. Holy shit. They don't like it. And free people will never pigeonhole themselves in the way that the, the authoritarian commie fucks want. Black men should be free to go on holiday wherever they want. These people, it's a holiday. Can skiing solve its diversity problem? Most people involved in fucking skiing don't live there and ski all day long. Skiing's a holiday. Peace is going to be about people going on holiday. If a black bloke doesn't want to go to fucking Tromso on his holiday and instead opts for Miami or Florida or a nice beach in Tenerife, that's up to him. You can't ram people into these fucking holes you just create. It's ludicrous on the face of it, and that's what I mean. It shouldn't even be a question. I'll just read on the off chance that I'm not talking about what I, I'm assuming it is. Because I haven't read it. I just got it sent to me. Seeing the headline, I went, yep, yeah, I'll do that on my stream today. Let's see. There he is. There he is. Look, looking out going, fuck this shit. <laughs> He's like, you do not know the way. I am ditching these fucking goggles and these cunting shallopets and I am going to the fucking boozer. That's what he's thinking. <clears throat> Looking at all them, he's like, look at all these cracker motherfuckers. <laughs> he doesn't want to be there. And fair play to him. He wants to go to the beach. Fucking enjoy yourself, son. People of colour have been historically excluded from the sport. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. When, when were they excluded? That's not true. Never been excluded. There's no rules. <clears throat> they're saying you're not allowed. That first fucking sentence is a lie. And they're not saying some people think they've been historically excluded. First line is a fucking lie. A barefaced lie on the BBC. <coughs> excluded. Yeah, exactly right, look. Exactly right there. Cool runnings. Fucking. That was in like the, the early 90s, wasn't it? That was a true story. So shut up. They haven't been excluded. Uh, in early 2023, a coach full of skiers and snowboarders pulled into Chamonix Resort, been there, at the base of Mont Blanc. After carving down the slopes by day, the group turned up to a blend of Afro beats, R&B and dancehall music at night, roping resort guests into a tipsy rendition of the electric slide. The trip had been organised by Soft Life Ski, a British collective which aims to bring Afro-Caribbean culture and vibes to the slopes. Fucking hell. I'll tell you what, I bet they were loving that word there. It's, it's shabby. Like, 
I've been to Chamonix. <laughs> Fucking great going on the piss round there. But everyone's there with the jackets on and the shallopettes and the having a pint. And the next thing, they all fucking rock up, banging on fucking bin lids or whatever it is. I mean, that is if that's music, you have to take your head for a shite if you think that's music. Digga, 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 digga. It's just black blokes banging on fucking bin lids. One bloke shaking some fucking maracas. It's not music. So I bet they love that. <laughs> it's shamming. I bet you you've never heard so many sacre blurs as when that fucking shit turned up. Afro fucking beats. Oh my God. Despite being at one of the world's most famous mountain resorts, the group were the only black skiers on the mountain. The group were the only. So even that doesn't really make sense, does it? Like, you've decided that it's a group, and therefore it's the only. Well, how big was the group? If there was a group of 20 blokes... And you turn up on the, on the fucking mountainside and it's a black slope and there's hardly anyone there. There's like eight people there. You outnumber them. But you can't go, we are the only black group in Chamonix. How big is your group? Group is not the same word as only. They're almost mutually exclusive, aren't they? So if there was a fucking big gang of them, they weren't the only black skiers on the mountain, were they? They were surrounded by black skiers. It's a fucking big group. A group of bootnecks turned up at the Hooters in Virginia Beach and we drank the fucking place dry. By the end of it, they didn't have anything. They didn't have beer, light beer, wine, cider, nothing. That was how much booze the group drank. So the fact that there was a group of them suggests they weren't the only black skiers on the mountain. That weekend, you couldn't fucking move for them. And on a night, you had to listen to them banging on bin lids and bongos. <laughs> so I'm sure a whale of a time was had by everybody there. Anyway, <clears throat> so Soft Life Ski is one of only a handful of organisations that addresses the sport's lack of diversity. This is what I'm talking about. If you go somewhere that is predominantly white, you might feel not at home. Yeah, but uh, all right. But you might feel at home. Are we done? These stories are all the same. It's like shit opinion pieces. Presented as news. If, if your argument involves the word might, then the counter argument can also involve the word might, which means you haven't got a fucking argument. Or as the extremely eloquent Mr. Christopher Hitchens used to say, that which can be insisted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. You might not feel at home. Yeah, but you might though. Checkmate. Yeah, we can leave it there. I, I, when I went skiing, I'm pretty sure I seen some black dudes there. There wasn't loads, but there was some. They might not, they might have felt right at home. What if you were born and raised in France and, and you went quite regularly with your parents? You'll feel at home, won't you? So Edmund Antwi is a fucking dickhead, as usual. As usual, anyone quoted by the BBC is usually a fucking pork pie for a brain. So who cares what he has to say? Skiing has always been an overwhelmingly white sport. Yeah, because it's skiing. Yeah, because you can't fucking snowboard down the slopes of Africa. <laughs> what, what, can you go skiing in the Sahara Desert? Telemarking down the slopes in the Sahara Desert? <sighs> Be fucking hard work that won't it? You can probably do sandboarding, can you? Do some sandboarding. <laughs> it's, it's preposterous to me. It's uh, who cares? Who cares? I'll tell you what's overwhelmingly always been an Indian sport: kabaddi. Have you ever seen kabaddi? There was a period in the nineteen nineties. I don't know if anyone even knows what I'm talking about here, but I remember seeing kabaddi on Channel Four in the like early nineties. And it's this weird Indian sport where they draw like a, an area in the sand and you have to repeat the word over and over again so they know you've only got one like lung full of air. And they run around going kabaddi, 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 kabaddi. And I used to occasionally I'd watch it when I was bored, you know, 12 years old, sat watching Channel 4 on a weekend. And um, yeah, so you do know what I'm talking about, like British Bulldog. And I used to watch kabaddi on Channel 4. I guarantee 
you've never seen a ginger bloke playing kabaddi. Right. Or you've seen uh, a pasty, blue-eyed, handsome devil like me on the fucking Chinese national team. It's not, it's not an argument. It's not a story. And it's not a problem. Um... Skiing's a white sport because you get snow. I mean, fuck me. I, you know what? I'm not going to talk about it too much longer. Even refuting it is making me dumber. Reading the story is making me stupider. Can we just accept the fact that it's fucking stupid? Like, you've seen the maps of the world. It's got nothing to do with anything other than fucking geography, has it? In fact, look at the Google Maps. You can see the Sahara on a world map. I know from, you know, plenty of map reading there's a bootneck. You can see it as clear as day. If you look at a map of the world, you can see what the topography looks like, like visually. And uh, yeah, here we go. Look, I put Google Maps up. I'm sick of reading this bollocks statistics. So that's the Sahara there. It, it blasts right through North Africa. And it's a fucking dust ball. I, I don't know if you've ever been anywhere like that. I unfortunately have. Places like Libya, Algeria, they're shit holes. Trump can't say it, but I can because I'm not the fucking president. It's a shit hole. It's a fucking dust ball, and it's just because of the natural topography of the land. It's north of the equator, it's fucking redders, and there's this powerful blasting wind, and it just fucking scours it. So that whole region is a shit hole. You zoom in, look, look at it. Look at, look at Libya. Look at the clip of Libya. That's what I tell everyone. It's a fucking shit hole. And when Trump said it, they were all like, oh my God, he said shit hole. Do you actually know anything? Again, if you actually know anything about history and geography and science and you read books, you know all of this anyway and you wouldn't write the story. I think what I can segue into a rant here is about the unending ignorance and stupidity of the midwits that constantly gob off in the public sphere. Ella Whelan is another good example from Spike. There's me fucking something to set me off. These people have the most cursory knowledge of things and then they talk like they're really, really educated about it. And I try not to do that, but I always know more than them. Like, I don't want to sound like I'm blowing my own fucking trumpet there, but... My, my website, my YouTube channel is a comedy website. I just take the piss. At no point is it ever me trying to say, oh, I'm an eloquent speaker, allow me to educate you. I just read shit and take the piss out of it because people are stupid. But I am cleverer than the people that do this for a living. The worst examples are people like Ella Whelan or like uh, people on Channel 4 or Sky News or the BBC panel members on the BBC, daytime television, like, on The View and the fucking shite, like, um, what's he, Jeremy Vine and all these people. They have the most basic, even less than basic knowledge about a subject, and then they all talk about it as if they know what they're on about. Here's a class example. Sargon, when he was talking to that fucking... Daft Geordie Joe Dacky, right? What she was like, Carl, you didn't know what you're talking about. What do you mean most of the people in prisons are black like? And he was like, I didn't say that, you thick, brain dead fucking slut. Well, never said that. He's a lot more polite than me. Thick as shit. Like, this stuff wouldn't need to be explained to me when I was a child. You all know in the chat, this is what I say, because working class people have got basic common sense. Working class people make sure they read at least a cursory glance at a newspaper or a Wikipedia fucking page before they start talking about something. But the talking heads have got so arrogant because they know they're protected and shielded by the mainstream media and the Silicon Valley types and the powers that be. They're happy to just go off on one about a subject they know absolutely nothing about. If I had one of you lot coming on here and I said, oh, you can come on my live stream next week and we'll talk about Israel-Palestine, you'd go and do your own work, wouldn't you? You'd read for a couple of hours. And then when you came on and I said, from the river to the fucking sea, you'd go, oh, yeah. And you'd know 
exactly what I was talking about and why they say it and what river was involved and what sea was involved. Uh, have you seen the videos of that where they're asking them all, what river, what sea? They don't know what I'm talking about. River Thames, fucking Mediterranean Sea. Like, they haven't got any fucking clue what they're talking about. They, they don't do the basics. Well, it, is, it actually is the Mediterranean Sea, isn't it? Problem point is, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, they don't do the basics. So these fucking stories get published because the people writing them haven't got a fucking Scooby-Doo, what's going on? Um, and they probably don't realise, because they don't know anything about basic geography, that skiing is a European sport. Because if you're a fucking Moroccan or an Algerian or a Libyan or an Egyptian or a Saudi Arabian or an Iraqi or a Jordanian, you can't fucking go skiing very easily, can you? <laughs> Whereas when you live up here, funny old thing, judging by, see where all that green is? That's because it's got a temperate climate. And there's parts that are so temperate, they're going to an Arctic climate. And that's why like in Reykjavik, Look, there's parts on the map there that are just totally white because basically there's year-round snow there. And that's why Greenland's white. And that's why Norway and Sweden and Finland got little white patches and green because it's, it's cold and temperate and you get snow for months of the year and the same in a lot of Europe. But it's not the same in Algeria or Libya or Niger or Mali or fucking Chad or the Sudan. And therefore you don't get fucking millions of Sudanese skiers hurtling down the slopes. <laughs> That's fucking... We, we're playing the fucking... The bin lids. I went away, 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 I went away. Down fucking Mont Blanc with a fucking necklace of teeth around the neck. That's why it doesn't happen. I mean, do you need me to talk about it anymore? Fucking ridiculous. It's not even a story. Christ on a bike. Do some research. Read a book. Look at a map. You fucking morons. Christ, I hate these people. That's what I'm talking about. Another one on about these Ella Whelan, fucking idiots. Um, midwits talking about shit they don't know anything about. The View. We're on the telly yesterday. Gobbing off about the pandemic. And they were going, oh yeah. Uh, it's irresponsible what you said. Because you said that we should never have locked the kids down. We should never have made the kids stay home from school. And uh, are you saying COVID never harmed a child? <sighs> like, you know what I mean? And I'm not a med, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical man. I guarantee I know 10 times more about the numbers, the statistics related to that than all four of these fucking absolute spackers that have got time on the television. We know the numbers. I know the numbers off the top of my head. Sweden said not a single kid died of the Rona when they didn't do the lockdowns. Not a single one. But there was a lot of harm from the lockdown, wasn't there? They didn't get to go to school. They didn't mix with their friends. There was loads of fucking emotional turmoil. There was massive increases in depression and suicide and addiction and anxiety and all this fucking shit. Self-harming, suicide, all that shit. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Got to tread carefully. Well, this is all factually accurate. All those numbers went up. It's a, it's a proven fucking fact. All the, the amount of harm, and, and, how, and you guys have all been following me for years now, the majority of you. How much was I ranting about this when the pandemic was on? Like, it proper used to drive me into a rage. We know, we know what we're talking about. And these twats who haven't got the fucking IQ of a pull-along duck Go on the television and talk bollocks all the time. Simon's in. All right. He's so I, 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 the only man of the cloth I've got any time for. How are you doing? He's probably more religious than most of the people in the fucking Church of England these days, aren't you? Reverend Sideway is more of a godly man than Justin fucking Welby. He goes daisy chaining round the gay nightclubs, that fucker. Um, so it's a strange time to be alive. But um, that's what I'm getting at. We know this. Me granny would have knew it. If you just sat down, like a genuinely like working class but not well educated 1950s woman, um, sorry, 1930s, I think my nana was born, and just sat her down and said, Do you think 
if we lock all the kids in the house for two years and don't let them go to school, there'll be any negative repercussions. And your nana would go, well, I'd assume they'd get fatter and lazier and the learning will go downhill and they might get depressed and anxious and there might be more bullying when they go back to school because they've got no friends anymore. She did inherently, without needing to like sit there with a tie on and go, we'll do a risk assessment with these medical professionals. She'd be able to just come up with loads of reasons why it would be a bad idea to do it. So you don't need medical training. You don't need any fucking thing. You just need half a brain. You just need common sense, basic street smarts. And... The twat to run the world, which, like people say, that's why they started calling it a plandemic. The, the, because it, it must have been. Like, they cannot be so ignorant that they didn't know there would be enormous ramifications. Because I was saying it three years ago, parroting Peter Hitchens, all credit to him, because I was just... Li literally, I read all of the different arguments in, like, fucking February of that year. It was about then when they were discussing a lockdown. And Peter Hitchens made the most sense. And I pinned my fucking tent to his caravan. And we were right on it. Right on the money. All the way through. So I don't deserve the credit for that. The only credit I deserve for that is reading a lot of different opinions. And then deciding that his was the best one. But I was basically parroting Peter Hitchens throughout the entirety of the pandemic. And how right was he proved? Anglo-Saxon, cheers, mate. Thanks for the pint. I say that because that's all I spend my donations on. Thanks for the beer. Thanks for the fucking night nurse chasers and special brew cocktails. Matt, Diane, thick as mince Abbott and David, even thicker lamb. Are you going to be home with foreign secretary? <laughs> I love it. I fucking love it. I told you, don't get angry. Get abused. It's hilarious. Those two could barely fucking string a sentence together. It's like Bill and Ben, the flower pot men, Abbott and Lammy. They should do that for the work Christmas party or Halloween party. Diane and Lammy, Bill and Ben, just a big flower pot and a fucking daisy on the head. Because those two, flubba lubba lubba lub, like they are, as thick as shit. Uh, so you have to be amused. You have to be amused. She'll spend five minutes in a room of the US Foreign Secretary and then leave and just go, fuck me. Jesus Christ, who's running the UK now? The, the circus is in town. Um, so that's amazing. And... <clears throat> That's what I hate about them. I hate these people going off half cock, giving you their, their opinions when they don't have a clue what they're talking about. The, the, it was obvious from the beginning there was going to be massive ramifications and anybody with half a brain said this, of course, of course there's going to be ramifications. It's not a zero-sum game. If you force people to stay in the house for a long period of time, it will have many negative effects. And a lot of people said, if the... If the virus was seen to be slightly more deadly than it was, if it killed one in every five people that got it, then the trade-off would have been a lot more obvious and you'd go, yeah, yeah, there's going to be a lot of harm from locking people up, but probably less harm than, than the virus is going to do. But when it became obvious that it was only killing people that were already fucking knackered, this should have been like, we were wrong, we were wrong, open the fucking gate. Joe, thanks for a big gold, uh, two cans of special brew and a bottle of night nurse. Cheers. <laughs> so, you, you should ask me a question though, I mean, just so I, uh, you only notice some, the ones with cash on when there's um, so many people in the chat, so should at least put a question to the boot neck and he'll answer it for you. Um, so yeah, it was bollocks. And have you seen all the numbers now? I told you, it was obvious that one after like, Six months, because some they started getting desperate, and some of the fucking stories they were sharing on the news, uh, fatalities were what. If it wasn't for the fact you're talking about someone's life, it would have been laugh out loud funny. But the reach was so staggering, it did make me laugh. Reason them. One of the most famous ones I did, I, th I think I streamed about it a couple of years ago, was the BBC ran this massive headline, and it was healthy. 20-year-old Welsh girl dies of COVID. And I was like, oh, my God, someone healthy. And, I, and, I, and I, for a second, I actually doubted myself because I thought, well, I've read all them statistics about how 9 out of 10 or 99 out of 100 people who died had at least two comorbidities. At least two for like 99% of them. 
I was like, so when it says otherwise healthy 20 year old girl, I went, fucking hell, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe some 27 year old lass just got it and died. And I scrolled down at the picture of her and fuck me. She had a heed like a wheelie bin. <laughs> I used the Geordie version because I just read Who's End by Resistor John because he knew what was coming. This fucking, yeah, healthy, well, it was in this case, healthy Welsh girl. This healthy Welsh girl had a fucking ass like the back end of a bus. It just showed a close up of her face. It took up the whole screen and it just had like a nose, a top lip, and a fucking eye on it. Because the camera couldn't zoom zoom out far enough. It was like, here's a picture of the healthy Welsh girl. <laughs> Just like a face, a nose and a lip. Because her fucking head was about 40 stone. <laughs> like, I, In fact, I didn't know people that fat appeared in the UK. You see them in like America, usually getting fucking winched out of the house by the fire department. Like that. I don't want to die, Jerry. <laughs> That's how, they, that's how they get them to Walmart via the medium of removing the fucking roof and using a crane. But she was massive. Absolute man -ed. Like, she had a fucking... She had a head like one of those Highland fucking cows. I mean, the one off the Highland toffee wrapper. Fucking head was that big. Like, I don't even know how big. But can't fit it on. Like, it'd be like me carrying a fucking medicine ball onto the screen. A Swede was massive. About 40 chins. More chins than the Chinese phone, but that's one of my favourite. Fucking blood pressure was eight figures. If you cut yourself shaving, it'd go... It'd be like a fucking hand grenade going off. I can imagine she go to the doctors because she's got a skin tag. Uh, it's, it's no problem, love. We just, we just snip that straight off. Hiroshima. <laughs> that's fucking... Like... The doctor cuts a skin tag off her chin and it's like it's like the Viet Cong detonating a fucking clay boy in the Vietnam War movies. Just snip this off, love. No problems. <laughs> this side towards the enemy. <clears throat> it was unbelievable. And, and this is what they were saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking otherwise healthy. I was like, listen, just because you haven't been diagnosed with anything doesn't mean you're healthy. If you're 40 stone... Definitely not healthy. Fuck, imagine being 40 clem. She, she, must, she must have just lived off fucking turkey twizzlers. And turkey twizzlers, if you don't know, the reason I use that analogy quite a lot, <laughs> I remember reading somewhere that a turkey twizzler, if you, if you get lard and cut it into the shape of a turkey twizzler, exactly by the millimetre, the lard is better for you than, than the turkey twizzler because when they do the deep fat frying, it like concentrates the fat. <laughs> so if you literally cut a chunk of lard into the exact shape and weight of a turkey twizzler, you're better off eating the fucking lard, just chewing a stick of it rather than having a turkey twizzler. Um, <laughs> but you're on me, mucker, cracking stream. Oh, that'll get me two out here, Anglo-Saxon. Cheers, mate. Cheers, but fucking hell, I'll be swimming in special brewing night nurse chasers tonight. Get in. Party time. Um, <clears throat> what else have we got? Blood type mayonnaise. Yeah, there you go. Another, another one I like. Obviously, mayo on a dog tax. Fucking, she, she's one of them who likes eating chips with, with milkshakes. Ever seen anyone do that out here? Seen some dirty bastard dipping French fries in a milkshake? It's like... Not not fat enough then, eh? No, it's just you just gave up on life. <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck it. Just just mix them, you know, get your dessert. <laughs> Pint of Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> Couple of pounds of mince. <laughs> Stir it up and just trough it in a water. I mean, if you're that fat, you probably don't notice it'll be like, eh, they all get mixed up in the stomach, innit? Fuck it. Do it in a water. Eat it out the same bowl. Use a bucket. Yeah, use a bucket. That's a great American invention, isn't it? Eating with a bucket. Fuck using a plate. Strap it to my head. <laughs> Fucking bucket. There's one thing we should do. They talk about taxing people healthy. They should stop selling food out of a fucking bucket. If you're eating out of a bucket, there's, there's a problem there. Humans eat off plates, if you didn't know. Never noticed that. 
buckets are for animals. Fucking nose bag. Uh, right, anyway, let's do another story. I'm, I'm not doing the skiing diversity one anymore. I can't be done with it. Let me fucking have a look on Twitter and see if I can find one. <clears throat> I'll put one in the chat while I'm looking if you want. Oh, yeah, this will make you laugh. Look. <laughs> Look at this one. I had to reply. I couldn't help it. I'm childish. This says, Joe Biden. Joe Biden posts photo to celebrate Women's History Month. What's the first thing you notice about this photo? I was like, fucking Frank, Frank Bruno in a frock. Joey Barton said, fucking Bigfoot. <laughs> That's a fucking shaved Wookiee stood at the front that isn't it? <laughs> Bigfoot. Yeah, I love that. That absolute giant in the middle of the fucking photo. You'd think the cameraman the clock and went Behemoth <laughs> Like here at least get the behemoth to sit down. Fuck me. Making the president look like a dwarf. He's got to try and look imposing on the world stage. If I was, a, I'm, again, I'm not a pr professional photographer. I'd have spotted that. I'd have said, uh, I'm not being funny. We need the president to look tall and masculine. Why don't shaved Wookiee sit down, president stand up? Doesn't it? That looks like Biden's going to be turned around. Like she's going <laughs> to, the photo finishes. Can, what can I use as a prop for Biden's head? Yeah, there. We'll use this this pint glass. There's Biden's head in front of the Wookiee, right? He's like, ah, <clears throat> photo's done. Then she just grabs his head, <coughs> turns it round, <coughs> forces him to <laughs> suck her off. It reminds me of my old favourite joke. I told you my, my primary school joke. My uncle Ian told me when I was about eight. I've told you a lot this loads of times, but I'm still repeating myself for the new guys. When a bloke goes into a prison cell. And he walks in, there's a massive meathead in there in a vest. And he says, we're going to be a family now. Do you want to be the mommy or the daddy? And he says, I'll, I'll, I'll be the daddy. I'll be the daddy. And he goes, come suck mommy's cock. That's what that fucking photo reminds me of. The shaved Wookiee is definitely going to be making mommy, <laughs> is definitely going to be making daddy suck its cock. A few seconds after this picture ends. Because he's just down there going, fucking hell. She could probably just crush his skull. Looks like, a, you know, like when the mountain crushes fucking, crushes that bloke's skull on Game of Thrones. She could just crush his, assassinate him in like, with just a pinch of a wrist. So, eh. Be like, it'd be like twisting a budgie's fucking head off, wouldn't it? <laughs> the Saudis should have paid, not the Saudis, the, the Houthis. Should have just paid Frank Bruno and Chew, Chewie could have got that fucking done in half a second. No weapons required. Just reach out and snuff his life out. <laughs> like braining a fucking squirrel. So I love that. What's the first thing? Yeah, bigger biceps than the Hulk. Could just march down the fucking street, caving people's heads in. <laughs> Twisting heads off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Love that. So that made me laugh. Well done, Joey Barton, for giving me a fucking chuckle. Huge fucking thing. Um, Gotta be a trans, ain't it? Gotta be. <laughs> Fixed it for you. <laughs> I, love, I love how they've subtly made Big Mike <laughs> about an extra three inches higher. Cheat. Uh, she definitely is the only one who uses the fucking Mac 3 in Barak's house, isn't she? Definitely. <laughs> Probably need more than a Mac 3. <laughs> so, Big Mike must be using like a fucking... What's it called? Uh, what was it? Sweetie Todd. Big Mike's got to be using a Sweetie Todd like a cutthroat. Like... <laughs> fucking snaps it on a jugular. <laughs> yeah. Barak! Bring the scythe through. <laughs> like, you know those things like the Grim Reaper carries? Yeah. <laughs> Scraping the stubble off a fucking minge. Uh, 
Frank Bruno. Yeah, beauty that in it. Frank Bruno in a frock. I love it. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's enough laughing at <laughs> laughing at Bigfoot. You know what? That does remind me. Uh, I've told you there's a few there's a few reviewers that I like on YouTube. Um, my favourite ones are uh, The Despot of Antrim. If you haven't watched him, go and check him out. He is, he's great. Genuinely funny film reviews. And uh, Reaper, who's a scouser. And Reaper did a review of True Detective, which is um, a fucking travesty, because that was actually a good show. Like, I like True Detective. I'm into detective shows. And the new one, right, the woman in it is a fucking house brick. Like, as the acting range of a house brick. She's just this big black woman who was apparently a boxer. And she fucking scowls on purpose all the way through. And I swear to God, it's like she looks like fucking Ving Rhames. Remember Ving Rhames? <laughs> she, it's like she's trying to pull the same face him all the time. She's like that. <clears throat> like resting bitch face mixed with fucking Ving Rhames. John Coffey or Hightower. Hightower, that's another good one, yeah. That not that a fucking brilliant scene on uh, Police Academy where, <laughs> again, you couldn't even get away with it now. She steps on the captain's foot and he goes, my foot, you dumb fat. I can't repeat the name. <laughs> it starts with a J uh, and ends in Igaboo. <laughs> it's basically what he calls her. Uh, he couldn't even touch that in a fucking Hollywood movie nowadays. But he says, my foot, you dumb fat, said slur. And then Ty Tower just turns around and just starts marching towards him. And he's like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Like, hilarious. That was in the good old days where, and you're not laughing at the black people. You're laughing at the guy who's an arsehole for saying that to the fucking nice, quiet lass who doesn't deserve it. That was a good show. And it wasn't fucking racist. It was funny. And it was good humour across the board. And a load of the black characters in it were the most popular. When I was a kid, like, all the kids liked Hightower and the bloke who made the daft noises all the time, didn't they? It, I think that's another good example, actually, that I've never thought of, is um, about the lie that they all spread about needing to be represented. Because when I was a kid, I, I think in back, Red Dwarf was massively popular when I was in primary school. And two out of the three main cast members were mixed race or black. And everybody like White um, Police Academy and Hightower was like the cool one. And so was the dude who made all the noises. It's like, you didn't think about colour. I don't believe people do, is the point I'm making. I don't believe people do. I don't. This idea, this commie rhetoric you see everywhere now, where they say, I need to see myself represented. It's just an outright lie. And everybody in this room knows, everybody over the age of about 30 who remembers enjoying entertainment when they were kids. Uh, I told you another example I've used all the time is uh, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Wildly popular in England in the early 90s. Everybody liked it. You don't need to be represented. You just don't. It's an outright fucking fiction. Everybody liked that new Godzilla movie because they're, Jap- they're all Japanese. You don't need to be represented. And there's been great films where you re- where I really identify with the female character, Sigourney Weaver. I didn't watch Aliens and go, oh my God, the hero doesn't represent me. She's got fucking tits. Uh. It's a ridiculous argument. It's a non-argument, like almost everything they say, which is why they've lost the argument and they're going to lose the war. Because normal people, like oh, the 650 in the fucking chat, and normal people up and down the country in pubs and fucking workplaces know when someone's telling them shite and spinning them a line. And everybody who's ever enjoyed the fucking Cosby show or watched The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and thought, oh, that's good, I'll watch the next episode or Red Dwarf or been anywhere or done anything knows that everything they tell you is fucking claptrap. It's total shit. Oh, yeah, we used to watch that as well, didn't we? That wasn't bad. Desmond's. So it's shit. It's bollocks. You don't need to be represented. You've never needed to be represented. It's a commie lie because they're playing a commie game. And, uh, yeah, that's that. We can just about finish up, I think. Sam Melia, I noticed some of you have donated. Yeah, it's, it's a good cause. Poor bastard. I, I firmly believe that in 10 years' time, they'll look back on him and that'll be a case where they'll go, this was the height of our sickness. Like, paedophiles, rapists, burglars, crackheads, 
thieves, drug dealers, all of them getting let off with no custodial time and a bloke putting stickers out saying, we have rights too. Britain's built Britain. Politely worded stickers, goes to jail for two years. Doesn't matter what your politics are. I like to think even if fucking Jeremy Corbyn had any convictions and he's seen that, he'd say, this is a travesty. I think I would. I think the old left would. Someone like Tony Benn would probably be like, should we be sending people to prison? For stickers? Really? But none of these rats, these commie rats, who call themselves liberals and don't even know the meaning of the word, have any conviction. They don't mean what they say. And they are, they are lower than a snake's ball sack. If any of them had any integrity, they'd be defending him. People like Owen Jones called themselves fucking liberal and you're sitting there and watching a family man rot in a prison cell because he put a fucking sticker out. You horrible, slimy little shit. These fucking people have got no fucking moral fibre at all. They cannot talk down to you. They cannot judge you. Never let them do it. I always end by ranting about that because I fucking believe it. You are better than them. You're a better person than them. You're a better fucking, you're more moral than they are. You contribute more to our society. And what you do is actually made a difference in the world. These people are fucking scum and they destroy everything they touch. Absolute rats. Anyway, we'll call it there because I need to drink. And I'm meeting a friend of mine for a few pints today, so I want to have a good one. While my missus does some decorating, I feel like um, she's doing the, the, the man's job and I'm going to get pissed. Uh, she's a fucking good egg. She's a good egg. I have to say so. Right. You are. Uh, thanks for tuning in. As all, thanks for the donations and any new members. Welcome to the fucking show. Yeah, I am cynically wondering why my numbers have gone up lately. In the month that Google was found out, pushing the founding fathers as looking like the fucking cast of the Cosby Show, I do find it strange. My numbers, my subs, and my traction has tripled in the last month. Very, very, very odd. It's almost like they've finally took me off the naughty list. But I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you all very soon. Toodle fucking pip. Cheers.